Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to another addition to the Get Started series, in which we go over talents, traits, how to do damage and more. In this episode, we're going to be covering Demonology Warlocks. All of this information has to been given to us by Sorcery, regarded by many as one of the best Demonology Warlocks currently, and achieving Gladiator 7 times as well as rank 1 in the final season of Legion. So let's begin. First up, as always, let's start with the talents. As default, your talent should look like this, but as always, you'll be wanting to change a few depending on the situation and what compositions you are facing, which we'll cover in more detail now. Up first are the level 15 talents. We have the choice between Dreadlash, Demonic Strength and Bile Scourge Bombers. Dreadlash makes it so that your Dreadstalkers do a little extra AoE on grouped up targets when summoned. This can be taken versus double melee comps where you are looking to do a little extra cleave damage and value the more AoE consistent pressure. Demonic Strength is the default talent here and gives you some very strong on demand burst on a 1 minute cooldown via your pet. Bile Scourge Bombers is currently very undertuned and costs soul shards so shouldn't be taken in any scenario currently. Next up is the choice between Demonic Calling, Power Siphon and Doom. Demonic Calling makes it so that your Shadow Bolt and Demon Bolt have a chance to make your Dreadstalkers instant and cost only one shard. This is fine in theory but lacklustre compared to the other two options currently. However, could be combined with Bile Scourge Bombers if it ever gets buffed. Power Siphon should be your default talent in this row. It gives you some on-demand burst by giving you the ability to sacrifice up to two Wild Imps to generate two stacks of Demonic Core making your Demon Bolt instant cast and deal some increased damage. Doom currently does no damage and only deals damage every 30 seconds now. This is not worth it in any scenario currently. Moving on to level 45 talents, we have the choice between Demon Skin, Burning Rush and Dark Pact. First of all is Demon Skin. This causes your Soul Leech to passively stack up until you gain a shield equal to 15% of your maximum health. Over the course of a game, this really adds up and should be the default choice in any situation where you're going to be tanking damage. Burning Rush increases the movement speed by 50%, with the drawback of dealing 4% of your maximum health per second. This should never be taken for Arena, as the extra mobility is not worth the damage you will be taking. However, this can be considered in battlegrounds when you'll be wanting to move around the map faster or keep up with enemy flag carriers for example. Last up is Dark Pact. This sacrifices 20% of your current health to give you an absorb. You can use this while in stuns. This can be considered versus heavy burst comps that would look to kill you in windows with your healer crowd controlled, giving you an extra way to survive the CC and allow your healer to top you. Up next are the level 60 talents. From the Shadows, Soul Strike and Summon Vile Fiend. From the Shadows is currently very weak, but could gain a lot of strength if Demonic Strength ever gets nerfed, meaning you could combine this talent with Demonic Calling and Bile Scourge Bombers. Soul Strike should be your default choice here. It gives you some nice on demand damage as well as generating a Soul Shard. This should be used off cooldown. Also, this is a great tool at killing Totems and Scythians. Summon Vile Fiend can be taken as an option when facing casters instead of Soul Strike, when you want a little extra burst. For the level 75 talents, we have the choice between Dark Fury, Mortal Coil and Demonic Circle. Dark Fury reduces the cooldown on your Shadow Fury by 15 seconds, making it a 45 second cooldown. This shouldn't really be considered for Arena, as the loss of the extra defensive would always be a risk, and with Shadow Fury being a 1.5 second cast, it's very telegraphed, and gives your enemies time to react. However, this is still has a place in Battlegrounds when your team lacks stuns. Also, this loses a lot of value as your Demo 
already has Axtos from its pet. Mortal Coil is a 45 second 3 second in-cap, causing the enemy to flee, and also healing you for 20% of your health. This is great in some scenarios for helping set up kills, but don't need the ability to kite with Demonic Circle, such as when playing with a Shadow Priest you can Mortal Coil off his Psychic Horror to assist in landing kills, as he will, he will often be the target. Demon Circle should be the default choice here. In most scenarios you will be the target or will be swapped to in points of the game. Having Demonic Circle allows you to more easily escape harm's way and get to safety. You should take this in almost all arena games unless you feel you're not needing the added mobility but instead require more kill potential from Mortal Coil. Next up is Soul Conduit, Inner Demons and Grimoire Falguard. Soul Conduit gives you a chance to refund Soul Shards when you use them. This talent gains good value when you are left to free cast. However, in PvP this is often not the case, so it loses a lot of value when compared to the more consistent and less RNG based talents on this tier. Inner Demons passively summons wild imps to fight every 12 seconds and also gives you a chance to summon an additional demon. This is great consistent damage and also gives you some more imps for power siphon. This should be your default choice for arena. Last up is Grimoire Falguard. This gives you an extra pet that deals some decent damage for 15 seconds and also stuns the target. This can be taken when you expect the game to be very short or even in 1v1 scenarios for the added burst. However, when compared to Inner Demons it provides less damage overall. Finally, we have the level 100 talents, Sacrifice Souls, Demonic Consumption and Never Portal. Sacrifice Souls should be your default choice here. It just flat out buffs your Demon Bolt and Shadow Bolt damage by 5% for every pet you have out. This synergizes well with Inner Demons and just provides more consistent damage than the other two options on this row. Demonic Consumption can be considered in rare cases where you expect the game to be short and thus won't gain match value out of Sacrifice Souls. Last up is Never Portal. This is a very gimmicky and costs 3 shards as well as having a 2.3 second cast time and a 3 minute cooldown, which is not worth it for the damage it provides and it's weaker than both the other two options for both burst and consistent damage. Now we know what talents we should be using in all situations, let's talk about honor talents. Now in Battle for Azeroth, we have the choice to choose between 12 talents, being able to pick 3 at a time in combination with whatever trinket choice you desire. Let's start off with the trinket choice. For trinket choice, you have the options to choose between Gladiator's Medallion, Relentless and Adaption. Gladiator's Medallion is the recommended choice in most situations. It gives you full control over your trinket on a 2 minute cooldown, allowing you to use it either defensively to survive or even aggressively to score a kill. Adaption should never be considered in Arena as it's too easily exploited by your opponents. If they see you with Adaption, they can bait your trinket easily then set up a kill that you can't escape. Last up is Relentless. Relentless is good versus compositions where you are likely to be crowd controlled often but don't need Gladiator's Medallion to survive the burst. Low burst, high crowd control comps such as God Comp are a good example. Relentless can also be combined with every man for himself if you are human. Now let's get into PvP talents. As I mentioned earlier, you can choose any three of these talents in any combination, giving you a vast amount of flexibility. The best way to deal with this section is to cover the best talents and some situational ones that you might want to play depending on the circumstances. Here you can see all the talents Demonology Warlocks have at their disposal. I've marked ones that will be taken often with a green tick, ones that are more situational with a question mark, and ones you will never be taken with a cross. There are currently two talents that are mandatory for demo. First up is Master Summoner. This simply makes your cool Dreadstalkers instant cast, making your rotation and burst much smoother and easier to do. The other must have talent in almost all scenarios is Cool Foul Hunter. This is mandatory again versus any team where you will likely need an interrupt, which in 3v3s will be every single game. 
as this talent gives you access to an interrupt on a 24 second cooldown. These are your two default talents. You will then want to choose a third based on the situation. The next talent is Never Ward. This will also be a very common choice when facing casters or melees with magical kicks, giving you the ability to reflect damage, interrupts and crowd control. However, when Never Ward is not giving you much value, you have the option to choose between a few others depending on the situation. Call Foul Lord is the same as it was in Legion. It summons a Foul Lord at a location that strikes anybody coming inside, stunning them for one second and dealing some decent damage. This can be taken in situations against double melee where you can potentially zone them off for either yourself or a teammate. Call Observer can be taken versus casters where you are not really gaining any value from your Never Ward, as it provides a little extra damage and forces your enemy to kill it. However, this is very rare as in most situations Never Ward will perform much better. Lastly is Curse of Weakness. This can be taken when up against melee but feel you are not gaining the value of Foul Lord, such as if you're facing a Death Knight that's training your healer and gripping him outside of your Foul Lord every time it's up. Weakness will help reduce the damage they deal with quite high uptime when facing teams without a Curse Dispel. Just remember, with PvP talents you will always want Master Summoner and Call cool Foul Hunter, and then to choose your third slot depending on the situation. Now in Battle for Azeroth, we've gained access to some extra traits that buff our abilities in certain ways. You can get Azerite traits on your head, shoulders and chest, and you have a main trait, roll trait and then a defensive trait. With traits stacking, you primarily want to focus on getting free of your best trait, but can still combine whatever traits you have available to you. Currently, there are two traits which are dealing far more damage than any others, and these are Thunderous Blast and Dagger in the Back. However, these are likely to get nerfed. The best class specific traits currently are Exoriate, which gives you bonus damage to your Demon Bolt after you gain Demon Core. With the spec you play currently, this has amazing synergy. However, the trait is currently only available on one piece of gear. We're not sure if this is going to be fixed however, so the next best trait is Shadow's Bite. This will give you a damage boost to your Demon Bolt once your Dreadstalkers fade. Also, it's worth noting you'll want to always try to have at least one Supreme Commander, as this will give you a bonus stack of Demon Core and some extra intellect when your Tyrant expires. The Demonic Core stack doesn't stack however, so only try to get one of this trait. So to summarize, currently aim to have free of either Thunderous Blast or Dagger in the back, or a mixture of the two, with one Supreme Commander. If this however gets nerfed, look to have at least one Supreme Commander and then either Exoriate and Shadow's Bite. You should be aiming for your main traits, but however, there are some roll and defensive traits that are a little better than the others. These are Earthlink and Overwhelming Power, giving you boost to your favoured stats. As for defensive traits, the best ones currently are Longstrider for some extra mobility and Azerite Fortification to help you survive when in stuns. Also, now in Battle for Azeroth, once again, stats and gear matter. There is no more templates, so making sure you are going for the correct stats on gear is very important in gaining that edge. Currently, for Demo Warlock, your stat priority should look like this. You want to primarily be focused on gaining maximum haste. After that, your next best stat is versatility, with mastery only buffing your pet damage and a decent chunk of your damage coming from Demon Bolt, it loses a lot of value compared to the added damage reduction you gain from versatility. Crit is nerfed in PvP and already a weak stat for demo, so should be avoided at all costs. For enchants, you should be aiming to get haste on rings and your weapon and gemming all sockets with haste. Currently for Horde, there is one race that's far above the rest, and that's Orc. It provides a moderate amount of damage on use via Blood Fury, and also the stun reduction from hardiness when not playing with Relentless. However, an honourable mention is Goblin for the extra mobility with Rocket Jump, as well as the passive bonus to our best stat, Haste, via Time is Money. For Alliance, there is a few options. None of them are that far ahead than the other, so it's mainly based on what you prefer. 
Void Elf gives you some extra damage via Entropic Embrace, as well as some extra mobility from Spatial Rift. Next up is Dark Iron Dwarf, which instead of the normal damage reduction via Stone Form, will instead give you some bonus intellect. This can be good for removing dots and then looking to counter pressure. However, I recommend Orc for Horde and Dark Iron Dwarf for the Alliance. Dealing damage as a Demonology Warlock is very priority based. You have many short cooldowns you would be wanting to utilise to deal damage, but the general rotation is as follows. You want to always make sure you are using Cool Dreadstalkers off cooldown. And making sure to spend shards on Hand of Gul'dan when you have 3 or more. You also won't be wanting to make sure you use Soul Strike off cooldown. Finally, use Shadow Bolt as a filler to gain shards. And Demon Bolt when you have Demonic Core procs and are at or below 3 shards, making sure not to overcap on Soul Shards. However, what makes Demo Warlock Rotation so unique is all the small cooldowns you have at your disposal to burst. Generally, to burst, you will first want to have already two or more imps out, and then use Power Siphon and Demonic Strength, making sure to use your Dreadstalkers and Soul Strike off cooldown. You also want to use Grimoire of Falgard if you have specs into it at this time, making sure to use Demon Bolt when you are at Demonic Core procs and have three or below shards, and spending any excess shards on Hand of Gul'dan. Demonic Tyrant should be used once you have a decent amount of pets out to extend the duration and buff their damage. Implosion should also be used almost as an execute to finish off your enemy when they are low and you have a decent amount of imps out. That just about wraps up this Get Started Demonology Guide for Battle for Azeroth. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill and leave any comments you still may have in the comment section below.